there, this is Tyler from the Unemployed Architects coming at you with another Weekend Warrior Show recap podcast. This week I'm going to be talking about my shows uh, last week at the Windjammer on Friday in Bloomington, and then Saturday I played up in Westchester near Chicago at the Chicago Highlands Country Club. So first I'm going to get into something that uh, I've been feeling pretty strongly lately, and it's this feeling of restlessness that I can't really get out of. I can't really explain It's just this undertone to existence lately, my existence lately, that I can't get out of. And, you know, I'm just sitting at work and I'm just, I can't, I can't do anything work related to kind of get out of the feeling. And I can't, it doesn't seem like I can do much at home. I mean, the only thing that really takes my mind off it lately is the, you know, live performances. But I, I don't know if it's just that I can't complete anything lately or if uh, it's just the overall monotony of having to work every day and it not, you know, it's passionless work most of the time. I mean, and it's weird, too, because I really have a good job. I can't, I can't complain about it too hard. And I'm, I'm in my field. I'm in, you know, I work at a music store. I'm around guitars all day. And I, I fix them, which admittedly isn't my favorite thing, but uh, I teach it as well. And teaching's, you know, almost fun. I almost enjoy that. I, I definitely don't hate that as much as most other things. So I don't know. I don't know if everybody, does everybody feel like this when they have to be at a job, you know, for eight or so hours a day and it just kind of sucks the life out of you and all I can really all I really want to do is go home and eat a giant pizza and go to sleep I don't I don't I just want to stress eat and uh, forget about the diet I'm on and forget about you know any progress I've made in like workout wise or anything like that I just want to I just I'm just having trouble with feeling content lately Uh, I don't know what the driving factor is maybe it's that i can't com- like i said i can't complete a task i i started recording three different songs and you know there's problems with every one of them the the riot red the one that i thought was going to be out the soonest you know i don't i don't know if the vocals are good enough so i think i'm going to have to redo the vocals and then the one that i'm doing with jeff over in peoria which is the guy that recorded our whole first album uh i can't get the other band members to really commit to a date on that to get get it on i mean that would just be the tracking part complete and i still have to mix and master and then i won in the studio that uh it sounded pretty good but i don't have the money to finish it right now i just don't have the cash i did i just bought this car which you know part of me is feeling like might have been a mistake but i don't really know it's nice to have a reliable vehicle but i am paying so much money for that every month and that is a long-term commitment, seven years of paying an extra rent check essentially per month. Uh, so that's that's weighing on me a little bit. And then I don't have the money to, you know, do the things that I need to to, like, invest money in the band. I know that technically by having a good working car is technically an investment in the band because – or in the in – the, in, I don't even know if you call what I do a band anymore, but um, – yeah, so to get to the gig, to get paid, but then I'm paying a bunch of money every month for that. So I don't know. I'm just feeling, I don't know if it's overwhelmed or what. I just, I don't know. I can't I can't seem to get anything done, and I'm just sitting at work, just like thinking about all the things that I could be doing with my time, and I don't know. The other thing is I don't know what I should be focusing on, on the outside part. Like I just get, I get so in my head, about what the right things are to focus on and do. You know, I need to promote shows. I need to record music. I need to try to make videos. I need to book shows. I need to, you know, practice. I need to play live. All the all these things that I'm focusing on, but I've been focusing on them for a long time, and I don't know what the next step is. Where where should I focus more to to get to the next level? Am I even at the next level? I don't really know where the lines are or the direction or the map. I mean, there's things that you see that work with other people, but those might not necessarily work for you. There's no playbook. So I'm just always winging it and, you know, kind of just crossing my fingers and hoping that something happens. I just got to keep pushing forward, keep, you know, keep 
keep trying as hard as I can, but, you know, then I sit at work and think, like, all the extra stuff I could be doing, and I, I don't know, it just sucks the life out of me. And I know what a lot of you might be thinking listening to this is, man, that guy complains a lot, but... You know, I'm thinking that too. I'm 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 in I'm in a weird space in my mind where I I feel like I'm overthinking and complaining too much and just I should just appreciate the good things and you know, all that stuff's easy to say, but I'm I'm just talking about a feeling. I'm not talking about anything else. I mean, I know I know deep down I'm in a good situation in a lot of ways, but <clears throat> you know, I just have this like I said undertone of just restlessness that, you know, I, I, I need to do something, but I don't know what it is. And I, I can't, I can't get out of my head that way. So that's where I'm at mentally. Like I said, I'm not sure if other people have the same feeling a lot, but I definitely have it right now. Very, very strongly. It's some sort of like <clears throat> withdrawal from life. You know, I, I, I like, uh, I uh, do fun exciting things, maybe the tour, maybe just regular live performance, maybe just getting together with some friends. And then, you know, you go back to that monotony of work and just being somewhere, someplace, somehow for some amount of hours. And you're just, I don't know. It just feels like, what's the, what's the point of the, I, I know what the point is. The point is to make money so that I can live and do the things I actually like to do. But Man, do I just think sometimes that it's just a waste of time and life. And the thing is, I know I felt like this a bunch of times before. The only thing is, this is the first time I'm talking about it on a podcast. And I know, I know that there's an end. There is a means to an end. Probably get to the weekend and not feel this way at all. But that's just where I'm at currently. So I figured I would just talk about it because I don't, I don't think I've ever really talked about it out loud before. I just get this restlessness that I can't shake. So that was my little rant about, you know, how I've been feeling lately. I apologize for that. I also apologize about the tone shift here. I'm recording the second half on a different day. And I'm definitely not in the same headspace really at all as when I recorded that first half. And I could have, you know, recorded the whole thing over again. But that's just how I felt, you know. So I feel like that's that's what this is kind of all about, I guess. is just uh, talking about what, what uh, is going on, you know. So let's talk about the shows. The Windjammer, the Friday in Bloomington. Uh, I've been having some tinnitus pretty bad lately, so... I ended up using some in-ear monitors for the first time in a long time. Nothing too technical, nothing too expensive, just some earbuds that I just went, there's a phones out of my mixer that I used, and I was uh, wanting to try that. And usually I'm not really a big fan, but for some reason it did seem to work pretty decently. I've recently invested in a headphone amplifier, so I'm going to hopefully be getting even uh, more used to it, but it went surprisingly well. Uh, this was a show that was double booked originally, as I mentioned in a previous podcast, and instead of canceling us like they normally do, they ended up and had the first guy play the first half of the night, and then we played the second half of the night, and, you know, I'd much prefer that to the alternative, so, and it was a good friend of ours, Kyle Roney, uh, from Kicking and Picking, and uh, we got there a little early to set up, and I didn't see as much of his set as I want, wanted to, but I probably saw about a half hour of it, which was good. Kind of got me excited about playing a little bit more. And then uh, he ended up and played, or yeah, he played harmonica with us for like probably 10 songs throughout the night, which was super fun. I mean, definitely made the night more enjoyable and just the the feel you know the it was just more fun more more free wasn't wasn't too you know i didn't get too boggled down by anything and being in the headphones was nice in a weird way because i wasn't you know as focused on the audience as maybe i would normally be it was just more just like having fun and uh i don't know i, I got told later that you know the vocals could have been louder the guitar could have been louder uh this was a me dave and low show and then Kyle, like I said, sat in. So um, 
overall it was a lot of fun I, I we got a lot of good feedback people were dancing and singing along and you know it was just a good night all around i think i you know i those notes at the end of the night from a couple of random people was a little sad because it was like you know i thought we sound in my headphones it sounded really really good so i thought you know we we killed it but maybe we killed it a little bit less and i think it might have just been the overall volume which i didn't maybe plan correctly for the room but i brought the yamahas because um i i thought that would clear up the sound a little bit and i don't think they were maybe loud enough and the the audience was just really loud so it was nice to have the headphones because you know i wasn't uh trying to shout over them and maybe that was kind of the problem but also a nice part of it so yeah overall it was a lot of fun good show it's fun to play with kyle i think we're gonna try to do some more stuff together here soon which is good and then so the saturday show was a little different so uh the friday night of course we waited too long to tear everything down and i had to work friday during the day and then saturday i had to work as well and then drive two hours to a place near chicago to a place we'd never been so a little bit of uh i didn't even talk to the people beforehand so you know it was a little bit different experience uh, it was just Low and I for this show, and Low wasn't really feeling great. Uh, so when I booked the show, they had said, you know, if you play one man, like solo, you get this much. If you play duo or more, you get this much more. So um, we, we booked it as a duo to get, you know, that extra pay bump. But, you know, in my head, I was thinking they were expecting, you know, like a full band. So I kind of pulled out all the stops sound wise i brought you know some extra stuff and i knew it was outside and it was a country club so brought some extra you know speakers and sound stuff and uh we pulled up to the place and it's like super nice place um you know the the lawn maintenance was uh very very high and it's, it's definitely smell of you know fresh cut grass and some flowers and uh it was just really, really fancy. There wasn't a trash can in sight. For some reason, I always think that's an indication of a fancy place when they kind of hide that that kind of stuff. Any any maintenance type things weren't just out and about. Um, and you know, we were walking up, carrying stuff in, and it was outside in a patio on the second floor of a golf course, country club, as I mentioned. And we were hearing Tom Petty, we were hearing Led Zeppelin, we were hearing CCR. So we were like, oh, this is going to be maybe a good show. And then we get up and we start setting our stuff up. And the staff is all super nice to us. And, you know, the sun's kind of getting ready to set. So the, the, the sky's looking, you know, lots of pastels, lots of very pretty colors. And we're just excited about the show now. We're, we're like, we were unsure at the beginning part. And now at this point, we were like... You know, this this could be cool, and the staff had mentioned that the whole patio was going to be completely full. So, um, you know, we got kind of excited, and I probably pushed the sound a little bit too hard to kind of, I think part of it was because the night before at the Windjammer, people were telling me it was a little too quiet, so I probably pushed it a little extra to kind of overcompensate, and like I said, I thought that uh, they were expecting more of a full band, so... That being said, we set everything up. We played a couple songs. It was real busy. Uh, we, I went inside once, and it was, you know, fancy curtains. Everything was super clean and smelled very nice. And uh, it was just one of the fanciest places I've ever been. I definitely was underdressed. Um, I was me and my my Woodstock T-shirt that I wear at like, you know, sixty percent of shows, and just you know jeans and stuff. Everybody else was in their nice polos and khakis. I don't know. Part of me felt like I didn't even belong there, and that, um, you know, maybe they could kind of smell that on me. I don't. I don't know if maybe they thought I didn't belong, or they could just tell I felt weird being there. <laughs> but um, there was, I don't know. It was just a weird show all around. Like we started playing, and I thought it sounded really, really good. Like I was like really into it, and we immediately, of course, got told to turn down while they were eating uh, because it was. It was uh, like a big dinner, I guess, which nobody mentioned to me beforehand, I guess. Um, so, of course, I, you know, I turned down. Maybe I turned down too much. Maybe that was the problem. I, I did, eventually didn't even do the foot drums because, you know, I didn't want to, like, scare people away with it. And there's something about when somebody tells you right off the bat to turn down that it kind of cuts you off at the kneecaps. 
just makes you sing a little bit less confidently. Because, I mean, before that, I was, like, singing strong and proud and like I was supposed to. And then, you know, we got told to turn down. And then there was this bonfire after the meal that was, like, you know, a full football field away from where we were playing, which, you know, it was kind of a cool night for, you know, for me it was, like, perfect playing the foot drums because I was sweating. So um, it felt really nice. But for everybody else, they were probably... A little chilly so there were I mean there were a few tables that stayed by us and I saw people kind of singing along or tapping their foot every once in a while but no applause all night and just like no acknowledgement that we were almost even there so I don't know if I turned down too much or what what the story was it definitely was uncomfortable though after about you know I expected that during the dinner that people wouldn't you know they'd be kind of catching up and eating but I, I figured as people got drunker they would, uh, you know, kind of get more into it, but that never really happened for some reason. So I don't know if it was us. I don't know if it was, you know, my my feeling of not belonging, or if uh, they actually maybe felt like I shouldn't be. I don't. I don't know. I felt like it sounded good overall, but we were maybe, like I said, a little quiet. And I mean, I I built it back up a little bit. I turned it up as the night went on, and. Uh, I don't know. I just couldn't grab them. I, don't, I ended up playing mostly covers because I figured that would be what did the best. And playing a lot of those bands that when we were walking in, you know, that lots of Tom Petty, some CCR, some Zeppelin, you know, just stuff that I thought that they would maybe appreciate. But it just, I don't know. Not that I expect people to like bow after we play or anything, but it was just weird to not have any acknowledgement that we were there. And maybe that was the intention. We were supposed to be more of like background music, but again, nobody really told me that, so it felt kind of weird overall. But it was it was a good paying to show. I hope they have us back. I'll know more what to expect next time. But uh, yeah, so it was it was a interesting show. Interesting is a overused word, I guess. Uh, it was it was it was an experience. I'll say uh, it was good practice and it was a pretty night out on the way back Lorelin ended up and got real sick so she's been sick for like a week um since then so she she won't be doing the shows in the upcoming weekend probably so this next weekend we have joe's pub on friday and then saturday i'm at inside out in gilman so that'll be what i'm talking about next week so as always i appreciate anybody who takes the time to listen And I will talk to you next time. Have a good one.